What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to go over how to get a DVD like this onto your Plex server. So I'm going to go over how you rip the DVDs off the disc and make it a video file so you can actually use it on your Plex server or your Jellyfin server and get all that physical media you have digital so you can actually use it in your server. So let's get right into it. So before we get started, we're going to need a few things to get going with this. So one, we're going to need a optical drive, something to read the DVDs onto our computer. So you can either get a SATA one if you have the five and a quarter slot open, or you can get one of these USB ones. This is the one that I have. I'll have a link below to it. It was 20 bucks. It works really well and it's plug and play into all these PCs. Shows you, you know, Windows, Linux, Mac, so you shouldn't have any issues. It has really good reviews and I use it so it works pretty well. The next thing we're going to need is Make MKV. Make MKV is going to be a software that's going to help us get the video files off the DVDs. It's free. I'll show you how to get that. And finally, we're going to need Handbrake. Handbrake is how we're going to transcode the videos from the MKV into an MP4 or whatever format you might want. That's going to be a smaller file and be able to free up more space and have good quality videos to use on our media servers. One more thing you might want is some sort of storage device for all your media. So I'm going with that you already have a Plex server or a Jellyfin server in place and you already have the media server storage set up. Whether it's a NAS or it's a big hard drive or whatever you're currently using, you're going to want that as well because you are going to need to have enough space to store all this stuff. So let's get right into how to do it. Okay, so like I was saying, the first thing we're going to need is make MKV. So I already have it installed. You open it up, it's going to look like this, and on the first pull up, it's going to scan the disk and see whatever is in there that's connected. The only other thing you're going to want to do is search Make MKV Beta Key. So it is a free program, and over here in this forums post, they post up the beta key. You can see it's good until the end of April 2024, so if you're going to keep using MK, Make MKV, you're going to have to come back and grab this key, so you can just copy it. You can come over here, and it's under... Uh, purchase. Here you go. So you go under help, purchase, nope, sorry. <laughs> Wrong one. You go under help, you go under register, and you just put the key in, and in there it will register it. So you actually can see that mine will expire 1-5-2024. Uh, I don't think it's right, but I'll, I'll come back and have to do it again probably next month like it says. But that's how you would uh, license your Make MKV. So this will be how we actually pull off the files. So like I was saying, Make MKV is going to be our program we use to pull the media off the DVD. So I'm just going to move over to the side, and then I'm going to drag this over. So this is actually my share from my Plex server. So this is my NAS that has all my data on it. And I made a couple extra folders on it for DVD rips to be transcoded and transcoded. So in here I have DVD rips. You can see I already have a couple things that I already pulled off. But this is on my NAS. The one thing I did realize is that you might want to save it locally on your machine. So I'm actually using my Windows machine for this because my Windows machine has a good graphics card in it. Um, it has a 2060 in it. Let's see. Yeah, so I have a 2060 Super. So I did it for the purpose that I'm going to get a better GPU processing. So when I go to transcode, it can ideally speed it up a lot and have more power to transcode it than using the CPU. I thought about getting a mini PC off eBay or even a small form factor or something and throwing an optical drive in it, but the fact is that it's going to only use CPU power to transcode, which could make the time very long where I have the graphics card and might as well use it. So that's why I did it my way. I did it on Windows to make it simpler. You could probably do this both on Linux or Mac and whatever hardware you have, but I'm using it on Windows because of my graphics card purely for that reason. and that I have my Ryzen CPU with six cores. So that's why I did it on my computer, not on one of the other computers. But uh, the other thing is you might want to make the local share, like I was saying, on your local machine, because I did it had to share across the network after it ripped. So it, I don't know if that took a long time because ripping the video off the DVD does take time. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes, depending on your system. I don't know if me doing it over the network to my NAS increased the time, so I don't have to do some more tests on that, but you might want to make a local folder and then copy it across. You most likely have one gig speed to crush your network, so transferring the videos should take a minute or two. But I'm going to show you just how to really rip it real quick. So when you come into Make MKV, this is how we'll actually pull the video footage off the DVD and put it into a share. So 
I have my information, and you can see it actually pulls up my movie over here. And you can tell me I have Ted in there. Ted is the movie that I am trying to get off. One thing before we start ripping the disc is you want to come over to this uh, settings icon. And you want to make sure that your destination is set. So I have it set to auto go to my DVD rip folder. But you can change it to wherever you want. So if you want to do custom. And then you can come over here and you can change it. So that just makes sure it goes to the folder you want instead of some other folder. Maybe it's on you know, your C drive and you want to fill up your C drive. So that's how you can change it over. And then we can come over here and we're just going to hit the DVD button. And it's going to start ripping. And it's going to go across and it's going to take a little bit. So like I said, it's probably going to take like 20, 30 minutes. But it's going to pull the files off of the disk. Like I said, it's going to work through and it's going to start pulling files off. So we're going to give it some time and then we'll be right back. So after make MKV scans your disk, it's going to show you a new window. And you can resize it so you can see everything. And now these are all the files that's able to pull off. So you can come over here and you can expand it and you can see what's available and choose what you want to pull off. Typically, these files with larger file sizes are going to be your actual movie. These might be different menus or other built-ins into the DVD. So we could really probably ignore those. So personally, I'm only going to I'm going to grab these two over here. And you would just uncheck everything else. If you have a DVD that has a lot of extras or like a director's cut or a whole bunch of other stuff built in, you're going to want to look through and make sure you can grab all those as well if you want to keep those and upload them to your server too but right now i just want to grab these so after you select the video files you want you can come over here and you can check your output folder again so mine's going to where i want but we can just open that up again actually actually looks like it isn't so i'm just going to fix that so i can go over my plex directory and i can go over here and that would be my folder and then you're all set you just click make mkv so then that'll go through and it'll process pulling these files off and putting them into that directory and when it's all done you're going to have a file that looks like this so the next thing is to come over here and you could check your file make sure it looks right so you could just run through it and make sure the movie looks all good and if it does you're all set and then we're good for the next step if it doesn't you're going to want to go back to make mkv and try to rip it again and either try getting a different file or whatever it might be but you want to make sure you have a good file before you keep moving on because you don't want to do this whole process and then you have a bad copy of the movie and you just wasted, you know, 40 minutes to an hour. Now, since we did make MKV files, you might need VLC Media Player to open these up because usually MKVs can't be opened in a lot of media players. So you see it has the cone. That's because I have VLC. So my VLC is out of date. But... It'll open up and it can run through the MKVs and that's how you can check to make sure everything's good. So I'm just going to close that out again. And now we're going to go on to the next step which is going to be using Handbrake. So Handbrake is what we're going to actually use to transcode our video files into a more usable format and a smaller file size. So if I come over here, I just rename the file. So it's TED2012. I put the year in parentheses so when we do go to put it on the media servers, it's easier to identify it. So we can just come over here and we can drag it in. I'm going to minimize that and now you can see that it starts to recognize the movie and now we could set it up to transcode the way we want so i'm just going to come over here and come down to let's see where it is i want hq 1080 30 surround so i'm just going to select that and then we're going to I'm going to leave it on MP4 for my format. You can lower the dimensions and make sure that your resolution is still good. And then the only other thing we want to do is come over to video. And in here, I want to change it to H.264 NVNC. I want it for NVENC because I want it to use my graphics card. If you don't want to use your graphics card, you can leave it on regular H.264. Or you can give H.265 a try. Uh, the compatibility might not be there yet, so you can try it might fail out or you can try again. It really depends on if you have a, what's streaming off your server or what you're going to be viewing the media off of, if it can handle it or not yet. When you see these options with the NVENC, that means it's going to use your NVIDIA graphics card. So you could do it that way. It should use AMD too, but that's how you can tell it's going to use GPU transcoding. One more thing to do before you set it to use um, the graphics card to transcode is you want to open up your graphics card manager so i'm just going to open up geforce experience real quick i found out the hard way that if your graphics card is not up to date it's not going to work it's going to fail out the transcoding right away 
So we'll just open this up real quick and I'll show you, just make sure your graphics card is up to date. So, and you open up GeForce Experience, this is going to be for GeForce Experience, I can't say for the AMD cards, but you're going to come over here to the left top, and you're going to check on drivers, and in here it will tell you if your driver is up to date, so you can see mine's updated, it's on the latest release version, so that's all good, so I'm going to close that out, and then we can come back over here, and we're going to double check our options, and it looks all good to me. So we're going to come over here to the top, and we're going to click Start Encoding, and we're going to let this run through and actually i'm going to stop this real quick down here on the bottom you can change where it saves so you can browse over to that directory you were working out of so i don't want it to save on my c drive so i'm going to come over here and we're going to save it to transcoded and you can see i have one in there already but that's okay so i'm just going to click save and we're going to hit start again that's going to overwrite it's okay and you can see it's kind of we see we come down over here, it's going to make two passes, and it's going to scan through and give us our time elapse, and it's also going to give you your time remaining. So since it's using my GPU, it's going to process through a lot faster than it would if I was just using my CPU. When I originally did this, I was only using my CPU, and it took probably like 12 minutes, 15 minutes. When I started using my GPU, it went a lot quicker. So you can see over here, my GPU isn't used from OBS, but it will be running through right now. The files are just scanning through. So on the second pass, when it actually transcodes, it'll start using the GPU. So I'll show you that in a second. All right, so now we're on the second pass, and you can see we have a little bit of a longer time, but it's still only about four minutes to transcode. And if I come over here, we can see that my GPU is still in use. OBS is using the majority of it, but if I change it up, let's see what else we can see. is it is in use i know obs is using a bit of it but i can tell you that handbrake is using it i did it yesterday and it was working this way so if we were just using off your cpu it would take much longer and that's why we're going to use the gpu we'll let this process through and then we'll all be all set so i'm all done with the job uh the one nice thing you can do about handbrake is you can rip a whole bunch of dvds and make mkv and then you can come over here and you can queue them up so you can queue up a whole bunch of DVDs to transcode or a whole bunch of your MKV files to transcode. And you know, if you go to work for the day or you gotta go out, you're gonna go to sleep, whatever you might do, you can queue up a whole bunch to work overnight and then you can come in the next day and you could have all your files all set. Here just to show, I was running through this again and you can see over here, Hambrick is using the GPU and it's actually showing right here, video encoding. So it does work through there. You just have to make sure that your graphics drivers are up to date and you set it to use the NVENC for the encoding and then it'll use your GPU to encode. So I'll be right back after this is all done. Okay, now that handbrake's all done, you can see I come over here and I have my video file all set. And I'm actually gonna open up the original over here. So we do a side to side. So you can see over here that it's 4 million kilobytes. So if I go to properties real quick, the original video file was 4.7 gigs. This is my new transcoded one. And if I come over here, it's only 1.7 gigs. So this is the value when transcode is that we get these smaller video files and it makes it more usable to store and keep on our NAS or whatever we're keeping without eating up all of our space. Because just think of it this way, if you know you have 20 DVDs that you want to get on your server, 20 at you know five is 100 gigs already where 20 at one and a half is uh what like 40 around there so much better option transcode and you also get the mp4 format which is more usable for all your users and you could just come through here real quick and i'm not going to really scroll too far because i don't want to get copyright noticed but you could play through your dvd and you could check and you can see everything looks good so you probably should be all set and that's how you're going to do this. So that's how you're going to be able to get your media off your DVDs and put it onto your Plex server in a usable video format. So I hope you guys found this video useful. I know it's something that I've been interested in. I had an eye on it for a while. So I wanted to get the whole setup and figure out how to do it before I shared it with you guys. But it's so simple and that's how you're going to be able to pull your DVDs and pull them off so you can use them on Jellyfin or Plex or NB or whatever else you're using for your media server. Even just keeping it on your computer. It's something you could just save in a folder and then you could have all your movies on your computer instead of having to use DVDs back and forth. Or maybe you don't have an optical drive in your computer. Whatever it might be, that's how you could rip your DVDs and put them into a digital copy. 
As always, I appreciate everybody for watching. I'll have some Amazon links below if you want to check out and buy some of the equipment that I use. I'll also have a link to my Discord server where we could sit there, we could chat about projects, or you know, we could help each other with any questions we might have. And I will see everybody in the next video. Thank you for watching.